Hi everybody, this is Andrea Mercier aka Anlom and welcome to my studio. Yesterday I did my very first arting video for the Love Fall Art event with the CAC and this is the piece that I made. I'm very pleased with it. Um, while I was making that video I talked about some different things that I would come back and do a follow-up video for and one of them was different kinds of paint. So right now I'm just going to take a few minutes and uh, show you different kinds of paint and tell you from my perspective and background what, where they fit on the scale and what I think of them. So this is just going to be more of an informative video than anything else. There's three levels of um, paints. There's level one which is considered the basics. Sometimes they're called student grade although I don't necessarily agree with that label. Then there's the middle one, which is level two, which is for nicer pieces, however, not fine arts pieces, which again is another label I don't necessarily agree with. And then there's level three, which is supposed to be fine arts, artist quality paints. So paints that you find in level one are the Liquitex Basics, the Amsterdam Standard Series, they have, a, they have another series called the Expert Series, which is a different level. Michaels has their own Artist Loft. I know that, uh, I think Hobby Lobby or Joann's has something called Master Touch, which I've used, but I couldn't find a tube of it, so it would fit in this as well. So these paints, there's absolutely nothing wrong with these paints especially if you're going to be doing mixed media and you're going to be protecting the work afterwards with a, a, a top coat or a varnish or a glaze or whatever. Um, these paints can fade more easily than others, especially the bright colors like red, orange, and yellows. Um, so you have to be careful, well, no piece of art should hang in direct sunlight ever, even if it has a UV protective glass coating, it, it shouldn't be left in direct sunlight. But these paints, although they're considered basic or level one, are perfectly good for all sorts of different types of arts, um, including paper arts, mixed media arts, tool painting. Um, if you were doing a fine arts piece and you were going to put hours and hours and hours into it and sell it to a client you can use these paints however you might not want to I mean when you first start out absolutely these are perfectly good student grade paints um, but uh, generally as artists become more skilled they tend to use um, the higher levels when they want to do really nice fine art pieces not to say that mixed media is not a fine art I believe it is however that's my opinion so there's these ones which fit into the level one. When I lived in Ottawa, there was um, an art supplier called Wallex who used to supply the Algonquin College. So they had their own house brand student paints. I don't necessarily consider them a level one, but I don't necessarily consider them a level two. I think they're a high one, a low two. They're good paints. I learned how to mix colors with these paints. They gave me fairly good coverage. They were fairly opaque. So again, really good for learning um, and for students. Perfectly acceptable for higher end pieces or just for playing around. Um, for, see, these are all very affordable. So if you're just starting out or you're on a fixed income, then and you want lots of different colors and you're not comfortable with color mixing, then these paints, perfectly good. Another one is this uh, Jo Sonia's. Um, she this this was originally used as a toll painting. So I don't know if you're familiar with toll painting, but it was what was very popular in the 90s. Um, a lady named Donna Dewberry did a one-stroke uh, paint where she would put two different colors of paints on, and people did boxes and very folk art type pieces, and this was originally for a toll painting, but it has definitely come into its own. Um, I actually like a lot of the colors. This happens to be one of their gouaches, which is um, a very matte finish, but you can get all sorts of different kinds. I don't know if I would consider it this 
or a little bit higher, but this is really good and they have tons of different colors and it's very affordable. So I like that one. Also in the kind of um, level one is craft paints. Now there's different kinds of craft paints. There's this deco art stuff um, which you can get fairly cheaply um, and then there's like this legacy uh, 1837. There's also um, there's tons of different kinds of craft paints. I have a few hanging around. There's folk art. There's a whole bunch. And originally these were again same as this tool painting and kind of crafty. Um, it's become very popular with um, mixed media and art journalists just because there's so many different colors. However, this one I would put down here with the basics and this one I would put up here. This Legacy uh, Premier paint I find is uh, a better paint and you can get some of the standard colors like cadmium, cadmiums and uh, alizarin crimsons and color names that people who have done some kind of formal training um, in art are used to hearing so I put this one up here and then you know there's art there's craft paints that go the whole gamut um, this one is folk art I kind of put it here it's better than this and this is my opinion only I'm certainly not a paint expert, I, and I've only been painting for four years, but I used so many different kinds of paints when I was in college, and I got a lot of input from all of my professors, as well as just using them myself, so this is just my opinion. Um, I think it sits somewhere like that. Now, there's also um, fabric paint, and in another video, I'm going to show you how to Paint. The only reason why I have fabric paint is because it's a 3D, a three-dimensional paint um, that gives, when you would do it on fabric, when, this was a writer, you would you would take this and you would write on your t-shirts and um, it would give you a, a three-dimensional effect. And I have them because I wanted to make three-dimensional effects and then I learned how to make my own three-dimensional paint. So one of my videos upcoming, I'm going to show you how to make your own three-dimensional paints. I find these a little bit pricey, but I do have some hanging around, and uh, they would be down here. Um, the only thing about the true fabric paints is, is that if you cure them according to the directions, and you turn the piece inside out, they're washable, and then you can usually lay them flat to dry. And the one that I'm going to show you how to make is a three-dimensional paint only. It's not appropriate for fabric. Um, although you can mix acrylic paint with a fabric medium and create a fabric paint, but that's a different thing. We'll talk about that later. So then we have kind of, so this is all kind of level one with this kind of leaning towards level two a little bit. This is uh, Grumbacher's Academy Acrylic. Um, they have a, a serious level two uh, high level two, low level three paint, which I first learned with. It's pricey. Um, I mean, this is probably nine dollars a tube in Canada, and you can get this for four or five dollars a tube. Um, and then they have a really big one, which is uh, fourteen or fifteen dollars a tube. And with these ones and other high level two, level three paints you know that they're using the real minerals and metals in them because as the um, mineral content increases, the price increases. So it's not the same price for every single tube. Some of the ones that have cadmium in them or some of the red and blue, like ultramarine in that, this size will be four or five dollars more expensive and, and that's, how, that's one of the ways you can tell that they're actually using the real metals. They say that this is the same because this says Academy Acrylic. I find that the ones in the tube, which I think are sold at retail stores a little bit more than this one, like I can only get this one at Michael's or at, at art supply stores, I just find that the ones in this tube are a little bit thinner, thinner, I don't know if thinner is the right word. Um, but that one's definitely kind of in with the twos for sure. This would be like a low two, and this would be a high two, low three, the Grumbacker. Um, 
Amsterdam, this is their expert acrylic. So as opposed to the standard series, this is the expert series. This one I would put at a high, uh, a medium to high two. Um, it has really nice colors, but I still find that they have a lot of hues, which I spoke about in my video where they're not using the real metal or um, mineral in it. So I would still just put the, this in with a two. Um, there's nothing wrong with the ones, but the twos will give you um, better coverage and a be better light fastness. And that means that um, it won't be affected as much by the sun. Then there's Liquitex. Liquitex, so they make the basics, which is their student level one grade, and then they have this professional acrylic heavy body, which I love, and that's like low three to a medium three. This is a very thick, thick paint. Um, this does not come. This does not come out. Um, creamy like some of the other ones. This is meant to be heavy body. It's meant to, to be moved with a palette and have depth and it's very expensive. <laughs> um, this is a small tube. They have bigger tubes and seriously I can't afford it very often. Um, this So this one would be up here. Let's move these ones down. In Canada we have an art supply store called Dessert's. Um, and they, so they're not a craft store like Michael's. They are a fine art supply store. So they're equal to like a Dick Blick or a, um, I guess Utrex is uh, another name that Dick Blick goes by in the States or a Curry's, which is an online store here in Canada. These are definitely high twos and threes. So I don't know if you can see here, but it says Series 4, and this one of the disappointments with this video camera that we got is it doesn't it doesn't zoom in more than this, and um, I find that it's blurry. Um, I played with all the settings. I was very disappointed that I can't go more than 640 by 480 on the video settings. I can go much higher with the um, picture capture. So I put in a mild complaint to my husband who's my IT expert and told him I'm going to need something better. So there's a video camera for sale if anyone's interested. Anyways, I know you can't see that, but so this has the real minerals in it. Then we have Windsor Newton. This is a very expensive paint. This is definitely a level three. I was very fortunate to get a set of them because of a course that I took. Um, I was being reimbursed for my my supplies for this particular course. So I figured I would go out and get myself three or four really super nice brushes and a set of really, really nice paint. Um, and Because otherwise I never would have been able to afford it. I mean this thing, this is a series one, this is just white. And this alone was probably 20 bucks. So I would love to have all my paints as this, the not problem, but one of the drawbacks of having the really, really nice level 3 paint is A, uh, it's very expensive, and B, it only comes in a very limited palette because as an artist you generally mix your own colors, so they don't have all the different colors that some of the level 1 or level 2's do simply because they expect that the artist is going to be mixing their own colors. So that's my acrylic paints. Then you have like the golden uh, fluid acrylics which I absolutely love. Very expensive as well. I mean this bottle here in Canada cost me easily 50 bucks and I just about cried when I was handing over my my credit card because in the states I could probably get this for about 30 but then the shipping to come over to Canada is 20 bucks anyways so because they're they're fairly big bottles they do come in smaller bottles um, so I tend to pick up the small bottles whenever they're on sale um, but I would love to have more of these golden fluid acrylics these are definitely uh, a level three 
They're very fluid and there's a gazillion um, videos online that show you all the cool things you can do with golden acrylics. So this is the PBO Studio Acrylics, which is technically a level one. Um, this is the Dyna one. I was introduced to this by Patty Totally Parish of Inky Obsessions. I'll put her uh, link in the uh, description so that you can go and check out her real cool stuff. This is a um, iridescent paint. So this one's called orange yellow, which means the paint is orange and the iridescence is yellow. So it is definitely a level one, but you get some really, really cool effects. I've never used this in fa like fine art. I, I hate using that label, but um, I do use it quite a bit in my mixed media and in my jelly prints, which is a new thing that I started doing that I'm kind of in love with, but don't tell anybody. And then there's this new Dilutions paint from Diane Reevely of Ranger Paints. I've used it a little bit. I was very fortunate to win a set of them at the Maryland Art Weekend this summer because I couldn't really afford to buy a whole set. Um, they're a, not that pricey. They're usually six or seven bottles, a, a six or seven dollars a container. Um, this is probably somewhere in a in a low two. You get good coverage. It dries really well, um, and you get really bright, vibrant color. So although it's not up here, it I think it's a really wonderful paint. Um, the only drawback, or some people think it's an advantage, is that it dries really, really quickly. So it dries as fast or faster than craft paint. And that's one of the other things. So the lower the number, so level one, craft paint, level one basics, these dry quickly. And then as you go up, these really good level three paints stay open longer. And you can um, mush them around, you can play with them more, and then when you add mediums into them, like extenders or slow dry, you can play with them even more so they're almost the consistency of an oil paint, which can stay open for days and weeks depending on how thick and how many layers are on it. So that's my very long <laughs> tutorial. It was supposed to be a 10 minute video. This is my very long tutorial about my thoughts on different kinds of paints. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please put them down in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up by clicking like, or you can press the subscribe button right here. If you subscribe to my video and you're a paper crafter, go watch my video. The link is down in the description of my awesome paper haul. And I will send you a 2 ounce or a 50 gram envelope filled with samples from that haul. You can send an email request to happymailrequest at anloan.ca. That link is down in the description as well. And I will mail that out to anyone in the world, international people included. So thank you very much for being here, and I hope to see you soon. Have a great day.